I have spent down an epilogue at the end of the judgment. Uh, maybe some sentiments involved. Uh, the value of Kashmir carries a historical burden. It has a social context. Thus, in involving constitutional status of the region, it is difficult to segregate the faucet. We, the people of Jammu and Kashmir, are at the heart of the debate. Uh, they have carried the burden of victims of conflict for several decades, originating from 1947 with the invasion of the valley. Intervening political circumstances did not permit a redressal to the fullest extent of the invasion. The consequences remain in terms of parts of Kashmir being occupied by other countries. The second round of insurgency holds its origin to the latter part of 1980s. There were troubled situation at the ground level, which was apparently not redressed. It culminated in the migration of one part of the population of the state in 1989-90. It is something that our country has had to live with and without any redressal for the people who had to leave their homes and hearth. It was not a voluntary migration. The situation became so aggravated that the very integrity and sovereignty of our country was endangered, and the army had to be called in. Armies are meant to fight battles with enemies of the state, and not really to control the law and order situation within the state. But then, these were peculiar times. The entry of the army created its own ground realities in their endeavor to preserve the integrity of the state and the nation against foreign incursions. The men, women and children of the state have paid a heavy price. During my travels home over the years, I have absorbed that the social fabric winning and the consequences of intergenerational trauma on the already fractured society. I cannot help but feel anguish for what the people of the region have experienced and I am constrained to write this epilogue. In order to move forward, the wounds need healing. What is at stake is not simply preventing the recurrence of injustice but the burden of restoring the region's social fabric to what it historically has been based, coexistence, tolerance, and mutual respect. It is worth noting that even the partition of India in 1947 did not impair Jammu and Kashmir communal and social harmony. In this context, Mahatma Gandhi is famously quoted to have said that Kashmir was a ray of hope for humanity. The first step towards this is to achieve a collective understanding of the human rights violations perpetuated both by state and non-state actors against the people of this region. There have been numerous reports documenting these incidents over the years. Yet, what is lacking is a commonly accepted narrative of what has happened, or in other words, a collective telling of the truth. Internationally, the right of victims of human rights violation and the truth is an end itself. It encompasses the structural investigation of the events and social political structures that led to the atrocity. The particular circumstances of individual suffering and an authoritative reporting of the results of the investigation. Additionally, truth-telling provides an opportunity for victims to narrate their stories, which facilitates an acknowledgement from those responsible for perpetuating the wrongs and from the society as a whole. This paves the way for reconciliation. While there are different ways of achieving these objectives, truth and reconciliation commissions have been particularly effective globally. South Africa Truth and Reconciliation Commission was set up to investigate human rights violations perpetuated during the period of apartheid regime. It served as a mean of reckoning or a catharsis for victims and fostered peace building. Reflecting on its success, Albie Sachs J noticed, as a result of the TRC, the private sorrow and grief of tens of thousands was publicly acknowledged to an embracing and personalized way. Another form of acknowledgement emerged from perpetrators themselves. They had to come forward openly in front of the television cameras, owning up their crimes. Finally, there was acknowledgement by the whole country that these things have happened and can happen again. That we needed to fit all these case facts together in some kind of significant pattern, which would enable us to understand their genesis and do what we could do to minimize any possibility of their reoccurrence. In the past, calls for setting up of truth and reconciliation commissions have also been echoed by different sections of the valley. In view of the inroads made globally and indigenous requests for truth and reconciliation, I recommend the setting up of an impartial truth and reconciliation commission. The commission will investigate and report on the violation of human rights both by the state and non-state actors perpetrated in the Jammu and Kashmir at least since 1980s and recommend measures for reconciliation. The commission should be set up expeditiously before memory escapes. The exercise should be time-bound. There is already an entire generation of youth that has grown up with a feeling of distrust and it is to them that we owe the greatest day of reparation. At the same time, considering the significance of the matter and under sensitivities involved, 
it is my view that it is for the government to devise the manner in which it should be set up and to determine the best way forward for the commission.